Today's video is brought to you by Athletic Greens and its wonderful blends of daily vitamins and minerals. AG1 by Athletic Greens is a comprehensive all-in-one greens powder engineered to fill the nutritional gaps in your diet and support your body's nutritional needs across the four pillars of health, gut health, immune support, energy, and recovery. It is packed with 75 vitamins and minerals. You can see them all on the back here. Whole food sourced ingredients combining the perfect amount of micronutrients, absorption, and taste to jumpstart your daily routine. You'd be hard pressed to find a more comprehensive powder or supplement on the market right now. Look, as you guys know, I'm not exactly a fitness YouTuber, but I do still like to try and eat right, take care of myself. And AG1 is the comprehensive nutritional supplement that I know is going to account for any holes that I have in my diet. I just take one scoop from here, pop it in this water bottle as provided, you shake it up and you are good to go for the day. Plus, AG1 is gluten-free, dairy-free, paleo, vegan, keto, low allergen, and low calorie. There's less than one gram of sugar per serving. One of the things I personally like about it is the sustained feeling of energy I get throughout the day. I have it with a cup of coffee typically in the morning. Coffee, athletic greens, good to go. AG1 is the perfect dietary support regimen. So if this sounds like the supplement you've been looking for, then you can grab your own immunity bundle. That's one year of vitamin D, plus five free individual travel packs for free with the first purchase at athleticgreens.com slash megaprojects. Again, year support supply of vitamin D, five free travel packs at athleticgreens.com slash megaprojects. There's also a link below in now today's video. The modern aeronautics industry is one of the most irreplaceable industries to the economy of today. From business to transportation, the world quite literally runs on the intricate network of flight routes and airports that cover every continent and almost every nation. It's almost impossible to imagine a world that doesn't have this network in place. However, it wasn't that long ago that this massive network was barely existing. It took several key innovations to connect the world through air travel and ultimately make international travel and long-distance flights a affordable reality. While many developments helped to drive innovation forward, one aircraft stands far ahead of the others. The DC-3, developed by the Douglas Aircraft Company, was an airliner that changed the nature of commercial flight forever. It's widely recognized to be one of the greatest airplanes of its time, and even has been described as the most influential airliner in history. From civilian transportation to wartime use, its speed, versatile design, and durability made it a plane that every nation and manufacturer immediately wanted their own version of. Early on, tickets were unaffordable for the average person, and routes were very restricted. To give you an idea of just how different a trip in the 30s would have been, it took over an entire day to travel from New York to Los Angeles. A passenger who wanted to fly that route could expect at least 14 or 15 stops along the way. This tedious process was also priced around $4,000. If that doesn't sound appealing to you, you're not alone. Aircraft manufacturers of the day were determined to make the process quicker, safer, and more affordable. Donald Douglas, the founder of the Douglas Aircraft Company, had been commissioned by Transcontinental and Western Airlines, or TWA, to develop a plane that would allow them to compete with their rival, United Airlines. United had just acquired a fleet of Boeing 247s and had a contract with Boeing that would allow them to retain sole purchasing rights until they had received their fleet of 60 planes. This meant that TWA would have to wait until their rival was reaping the benefits of this brand new fleet of transcontinental planes. The 247 was predicted to be an efficient solution to the problem of long-distance flights and it would have left United in the dust in the erased corner of the market. The Douglas Aircraft Company responded to their commission with the DC-2, a powerful plane that was already an amazing feat of engineering. However, there was a lot of room for improvement. Douglas knew that the fuselage of the DC-2 was too small to meet the popular demand for a sleeper plane that would give passengers the opportunity to rest on their long flight. Fortunately for him, American Airlines was also interested in a new transcontinental plane and requested an improved version of the DC-2. What came out of this second round of redesign was a plane that was wider, faster, more maneuverable, more efficient, had a longer wingspan, and would fly higher. And that was the birth of the DC-3. Built for speed and efficiency, the DC-3 was a simple design that utilized two turboprop engines. The civilian variant used a 9-cylinder Wright R1820 Cyclone 9, and the military version used the 14-cylinder Pratt & Whitney R1830 Twin Wasp engine. These two engines were fixed to long, cantilevered wings on the panel's all-metal frame. It was the powerful engine setup, coupled with the spacious fuselage, that made the DC-3 the perfect combination of speed 
and efficiency. What it had in speed, it also had in capacity, a feature that ensured its flights would be more than profitable enough to justify establishing travel routes that would sustain themselves on ticket sales alone. The newly developed efficiency solved the long-standing issue the American airline industry had faced of not being able to make flying a profitable venture. Many wonderful aircraft designs had come and gone without much use simply because they couldn't generate enough revenue to break even. To this day, the airline industry is still a very costly business. Planes need constant maintenance to be flown safely. Fuel is never cheap, and investing in the purchase of a fleet of planes is a massive commitment, one that assumes an equally massive amount of risk. Donald Douglas took all of this into account when designing his plane, ensuring that an adequate number of passengers could fit comfortably and that the cargo hold was sufficiently large without sacrificing speed. But ultimately, it was all of these innovations combined that would propel the Douglas DC-3 far ahead of the Boeing Model 247 that it had been designed to compete with. On its first commercial flight, the DC-3 proved that it was a plane that would completely change the industry. Its passengers were shocked to find themselves rushing off out of the airport in one of the smoothest rides they'd ever experienced. This made a flight took place on December 17, 1935, at Kitty Hawk, just 32 years after the famous flight that the Wright brothers had taken in that same place. In a time when air travel was still in its infancy, the DC-3 was beginning to open up the opportunities for more flight routes than any aircraft before it. A key feature of the DC-3 was its passenger capacity. With its ability to carry anywhere from 20 to 32 passengers and travel long routes without multiple stops, it was able to rely on only passenger fares for revenue. This was a much welcome change for airline executives who wanted transportation to be the core revenue source, not mail. Aircraft had relied on mail subsidies for years by carrying parcels in a plane's hold in order to increase the profitability of the flights. While this practice does still go on today for airmail, it was no longer necessary to help the routes break even. The freedom that the DC-3 gave the many airlines that were developing at the time allowed them to consider longer flights and more destinations as possible routes. While it may have a long reputation in the private sector, the DC-3 saw more than its fair share of combat as well. The military variation was named the C-47 and was proven to be one of the most reliable transport planes of its time. With its cargo ranging from people to supplies, the C-47 was customized to accommodate a wide variety of purposes. While different models of the plane were called the Dakota or the Skytrain, military personnel gave it the nickname Goonie Bird. The reason for this moniker was its resemblance of a long-winged albatross that flies over the North Pacific. In an interesting turn of events, Empire of Japan began to manufacture their own version of the C-47. The Mitsubishi Group purchased the rights to manufacture the design in 1938. As the Japanese military expanded its influence across Eastern Asia and the Pacific, the design of the C-47 was one that they had a lot of use for. It was the ideal plane to make multiple island hopping trips in a short amount of time. One of Japan's primary plane manufacturers, Nakajima Hikoki, began to produce their own version called the L2-D2. The irony of this production was that L2-D2 would continue to be used opposite the C-47 in the coming World War. This only goes to show how revolutionary and high in demand Douglas's design was. Operation Market Garden was one of the largest airborne operations during World War II. The brainchild of British Field Marshal Burnham Montgomery, this operation was executed immediately after the D-Day invasion of Normandy against the German forces that were occupying the Netherlands at the time. The operation was designed to be an airborne assault executed by over 40,000 British, Polish, and American troops parachuting deep into enemy territory. Such a large-scale attack required the use of over 1,438 C-47s of a number of different varieties. The planes were used to transport paratroopers and supplies, but their use wasn't just limited to their fuselage's capacity. Many of the C-47s used in the operation were dragging behind them gliders that were released over key drop points. These gliders carried paratroopers to their destinations and allowed them to have greater control over where they landed. While these gliders were an effective and often much safer means of transportation, they were not without risk. Lightly armored and without any way to protect themselves against enemy flat guns, many were destroyed before they reached the ground or crashed upon landing, injuring the troops inside. Unfortunately for the Allies, Operation Market Garden was a blunder, one that was flawed from the beginning. Hundreds of C-47s and their gliders were destroyed in the operation, along with staggering numbers of casualties on the side of the Allied forces. Even with this massive loss, the C-47 was still a vital part of the operation, one that would be utilized several more times in the war as both a supply plane and an airborne troop carrier. 
One offensive in particular found the C-47 in a critical position to drastically turn the tide of battle. It was in Christmas morning 1944 in the besieged town of Bastogne that Allied troops looked up and were able to see clear skies. The infamous Battle of the Bulge had been several weeks before, and it had been the bloodiest day of combat on the Western Front. The airborne and armored divisions of the U.S. Army had been surrounded on all sides and were facing imminent annihilation at the hands of the German Army. During the days of this drawn-out battle, the skies had remained cloudy and snowy, preventing any effective air support on the side of the Allies. Supply drops were also made impossible as an inaccurate drop would land crucial supplies in the hands of the Germans. It wasn't until there were clear skies that supplies were finally allowed to be dropped to the Allied troops below. While the supply drops were not what won the battle, they made the path to victory much clearer for the surrounded American troops. Finally, the repeated attempts of Allied reinforcements to break through the German lines were successful, something that was made possible by the resupplied troops in Bastogne and the surrounding area. This was hardly the last time the C-47 made a massive impact on the course of an American conflict. It would continue to be a staple of the U.S. Air Force fleet for many more years and many more conflicts. One variation of the C-47, the FC-47, became a lethal part of the Air Force's air superiority. Over the jungles of Vietnam, on the 23rd of December 1964, the sound of a repeated whirring pattern caught a Viet Cong force off guard. Their attack on the Tran Yard Special Forces outpost had been successful as they continued to gain ground. Suddenly, hundreds of rounds in a matter of seconds began to rip up the ground around their feet and tear their comrades into pieces. Over the next 30 minutes, the fire from miniguns mounted on a circling C-47 would spray over 4,500 rounds in front of the Viet Cong, sending them into a full retreat. This had been one of the most successful missions that the newly named FC-47 gunship had flown to date. Since the new modifications had been added to fit three minigun systems pointed down to the left side of the aircraft, several missions had been flown, all with varying rates of success. The three M134 miniguns firing 7.62mm rounds had proven to be incredibly effective. They could fire at a rate of anywhere from 3,000 to 4,000 rounds per minute. This modification gave birth to a gunship that would rain terror down on the Viet Cong for years to come, and would leave the Vietnam War with the boast that not a single outpost it guarded ever fell in combat. This new model of the DC-3 was renamed the FC-47, or the Spooky Gunship. Pilots commonly used fiery tracer rounds to direct friendly gunfire, and the gunship earned the nickname and radio call sign of Puff, or Puff the Magic Dragon, after the hit song by the folk group Peter, Paul, and Mary. While not known to frolic in the autumn mist, it did leave considerable mark on the Viet Cong throughout the course of the Vietnam War. The simple tactic employed by the pilots of Spooky was to circle their target with the plane tilted so that its gun systems pointed down out of its side and could be aimed down from an angle. Control on the console then allowed the pilot to both aim and fire the three miniguns until it was replaced by the larger and more heavily armored AC-130. This weapon was just one of many ways that the sturdy design of the DC-3 was put to use throughout its long tenure. In its custom form, the DC-3 was used for many years by militaries and governments for many different uses. The C-47 was quickly noticed by governments across the world who were quick to either develop their own variation of the design or to simply purchase their own aircraft and rename them with a different model number. In the years following World War II, these different variations were largely the result of the US Air Force selling or giving portions of their fleet over to allies of the United States. Anyone interested in Air Force history has likely seen the C-47 flying under the colors of a dozen different Different nations like Greece, Israel, Colombia, and Pakistan. The widespread demand for the popular design only goes to show just how reliable of a design it really was. It is one of the oldest aircraft in history still in use, with many DC 3s still flying at 80 years old. The construction is simply and easily customized. Past models of the plane even had luxurious beds and gave the passengers a chance to sleep on longer routes, a necessity during the long routes the planes would fly in earlier parts of the 20th century. Its use has extended to fighting forest fires, skydiving, and aerial spraying. Through its long years of service, it's been its durability and versatility that have made it useful in so many different industries.
While quality workmanship has helped the remaining models stay in good shape, the DC-3 also owes much of its longevity to the fact that many of its surviving models are not pressurized. Most airliners of today face tremendous strain at the hands of the pressure changes that their fuselage has experienced throughout the course of a flight. As most DC-3s won't operate higher than 16,000 feet, about half of the altitude of the average jetliner, there was simply no need to make this modification. This has made it one of the most well-preserved planes of its time, with over 160 still flying on a regular basis. Several are even used in regular commercial flights, albeit only after they've been thoroughly refurbished. There is a kind of cult following that the DC-3 has gathered from a number of plane enthusiasts and aviation purists who make it a hobby to collect memorabilia of the historic plane or the planes themselves. Many insist that the only thing that can replace a DC-3 is another DC-3. Many individuals still choose to fix up and own a DC-3 for private use, much like a vintage car. It's also still a popular choice for flights into underdeveloped areas without paved runways due to its durability and its ability to land and take off from rough terrain. It makes it ideal for these environments and for shorter airstrips as well. The oldest of these vintage DC-3s is a DST or Douglas Sleeper Transport that resides in Punta Gorda, Florida. This plane was originally built in 1936 and it has been refurbished a number of times since then. It's probably hard for any of us to imagine a world without international travel. There are industries built on the existence of intercontinental travel that would never have existed if it were not for the way the DC-3 made a long-distance flight a possibility. The wing and engine design that made its historical flights possible went on to inspire the design of many other aircraft. It was through highly coveted efficiency and durability that the DC-3 became a design that was widely replicated and imitated. Not only was it a successful airliner with its years of service, but it was also the inspiration for the majority of airliners even to this day. There have been many planes that have advanced the airline industry since the 1930s. However, no one can deny the impact that the DC-3 had on aviation. Its development spearheaded a series of aircraft innovations that would transform the way the world traveled and brought people across continents. Now, with years of development and progress having gone by, the flight from New York to California that would have taken a DC-3 18 hours to accomplish takes a mere five hours without a need for any stops along the way. It's fair to say that without the Douglas Aircraft Company showing the world this route was possible, it would likely not have been developed into a reality so quickly. Even with the innovations seen in many different airliners that have come after it, the DC-3 still holds a place in history as an industrial endeavor that lasted for decades to come. It revolutionized the nature of air travel almost single-handedly and opened the door for a whole new world of opportunities for the air travel industry and for mankind.